Have you ever stopped to think about how some people enter a room and without saying a word, instantly command respect? It's not magic or luck. There's a silent power they possess, a force that doesn't rely on words, but on a cold precision that makes respect naturally happen. Now imagine what would happen if, from today on, you could control your emotions so precisely and strongly that nothing and no one could destabilize you. For criticism, silence. For insults, silence. For attempts to throw you off balance. Just a cold and firm look without losing control. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can adopt the method of the ancient Stoic philosophers to transform your behavior into a silent weapon, where each of your actions speaks louder than any word. And no, it's not about being insensitive. It's about having total control over who you are and how people around you see you. If you're tired of being disrespected or underestimated and want to finally learn how to command respect without even opening your mouth, stick around. What you're about to discover could completely change how the world views you. Let's begin with the importance of posture and body language. When we talk about commanding respect without saying a word, one of the most powerful factors is your body language. What your body communicates has as much, if not more, impact than your words. Your posture, gestures, eye contact, and even how you move are capable of sending clear messages about confidence, authority, and self-control. Attributes that make people instantly respect you, even without you saying a word. In the context of Stoicism, which values self-control and firmness, Mastering your body language is a fundamental tool to command respect and show that you are in control, which gives you the power to influence the environment around you. A body that exudes unshakable confidence. When you maintain an upright posture with relaxed shoulders and a raised chin, automatically sends a message of confidence and presence. You're saying without words that you know who you are and that you're in control of the situation. This idea is deeply connected to the stoic concept of equanimity, the ability to remain balanced in moments of triumph or adversity. By demonstrating a firm posture, you signal that nothing easily shakes you, that you are strong within, and therefore have power over what happens around you. Picture yourself in an important meeting, while others nervously shuffle through their papers, shift in their chairs, or even avoid eye contact. You remain calm, with your back straight, looking directly at the person speaking. When it's your turn to speak or present something, your presence has already been felt, even before you've uttered a word. Why? Because your calm and firm posture projects authority. People automatically pay more attention to someone who is sure of themselves. They know that this person won't be easily disturbed, so they value what they have to say more. And if you need to intervene, your words will carry more weight because your body has already communicated respect beforehand. Eye contact is one of the most powerful tools of nonverbal communication. Maintaining steady eye contact with someone during a conversation or challenging situation shows that you are present, attentive, and in control. When you avoid eye contact or quickly look away, you signal nervousness, insecurity, or even submission. On the other hand, when you hold a firm gaze, you're silently communicating self-confidence and establishing a connection that commands respect. Another crucial part of body language is the use of gestures. In Stoicism, simplicity and moderation are important values, and the same applies to your body language. Excessive or exaggerated gestures can demonstrate nervousness or a lack of control. That's why learning to use minimal and precise gestures can be an extremely effective way to command respect. When you move deliberately, without haste, and use restrained, calculated gestures, you send the message that you are in control of both your surroundings and yourself. Your movements reflect your stoic mindset of self-control and precision. Imagine being in a difficult conversation with a colleague or even in a personal situation like a family disagreement. The person you're speaking with is making exaggerated gestures and raising their voice. What do you do? You keep your hands relaxed, avoid gesturing excessively, and respond with minimal gestures, perhaps a slight nod of the head or a subtle hand movement. This immediately shifts the dynamic of the conversation. While the other person is agitated, 
you remain calm and composed. This will make them subconsciously realize that you're on a higher emotional level. Your quiet, controlled attitude weakens their words because your serene gestures show that you are not emotionally affected by what is being said. When body language is controlled and precise, it sends a powerful message of self-confidence and emotional mastery. As the great emperor once said, when you encounter someone who makes a mistake, remember that what disturbed them wasn't the mistake, but the response to it. Keep calm and act with coldness. Silence is your secret weapon. Imagine the scenario. You walk into a room full of people, all talking and gesturing, trying to stand out with their words. But then, someone enters. They don't say anything. They don't need to grab attention. Instantly, everyone around begins to notice them. Without making a single sound, this person stands out through their posture, steady gaze, and aura of confidence. This person has complete control over themselves, which makes them powerful without needing to speak. This kind of presence is something we can all cultivate, and that's what I want you to begin practicing. I ask you, what makes some people command respect and admiration without saying a word, while others struggle to be heard and remain unnoticed? The answer lies in how they control their emotions and how their actions are precise and deliberate. Let's think about historical figures from the past. Imagine someone like Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and one of the greatest practitioners of Stoicism. He ruled the most powerful empire of his time but wasn't known for grand speeches or fiery rhetoric. Instead, he was admired for his calmness and control. He knew that to lead and be respected, the most important thing was to master his own emotions, be firm and precise in his decisions, and let his actions speak for him. They feel your strength. Your silent presence ends up speaking louder than any argument or shout. And believe me, in a world where everyone seems to want to speak louder, and shout for attention. Silence stands out as something rare and powerful. As the proverb goes, speech is silver, silence is golden. This stirs curiosity, draws attention, and most importantly, commands respect. So if you're still here listening to me, leave your mark by writing my silence is golden. Let's continue. Why is silence so powerful? Silence carries mystery. When you don't react impulsively, those around you start to wonder, what is he thinking? What's coming next? This mystery creates psychological tension. Saying nothing at critical moments can be more effective than speaking because it leaves others in suspense, unsure of how to act. In Stoicism, this is central. Words are cheap, but actions and behavior speak much louder. This is the power we want to explore here. How being cold and precise not only makes you someone who commands respect, but also someone seen as a force of power, someone others must stop and observe. As Diogenes said, I am not looking to communicate with words, but with actions. Emotional control, the need of the 21st century. Stoicism is an ancient philosophy that still teaches profound lessons about the power of self-control and serenity in the face of life's adversities. At the heart of this philosophy is the idea that we cannot control what happens around us, but we can control how we act. This control over emotions is what separates an ordinary person from someone who can maintain a firm and unshaken posture, even under pressure. It is the mark of a true stoic. To understand better, let's dive into the importance of emotional control and how it is key to commanding respect without the need for words. Stoic philosophers like Seneca, Epictetus, and Marcus Aurelius, names we all know, believe that uncontrolled emotions were one of the main sources of suffering. When you allow yourself to be swept away by anger, anxiety, or even excessive enthusiasm, you lose control of yourself. In this state, your decisions become impaired, and you become vulnerable both internally and externally. On the other hand, emotional control strengthens you and keeps you in command. Being cold in stoicism doesn't mean being indifferent or apathetic. It means being calm and balanced, even in difficult and painful situations. It's having the ability to act with clarity, regardless of the chaos around you. 
Let's consider an inspiring example. Whether you believe in him or not, it's an admirable example. Jesus Christ. He faced a life full of adversities, from opposition by religious leaders to betrayal by his own followers and a brutal death on the cross. Instead of reacting with anger or despair, Jesus demonstrated remarkable serenity and exceptional emotional control. In moments of extreme affliction, like in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prayed with sorrow but maintained his inner peace and his determination to fulfill his mission. His teachings, as seen in the Sermon on the Mount, emphasize the importance of responding to evil with love and forgiveness. His ability to maintain calm and focus on his principles, even in the face of extreme adversity, not only inspired his followers, but also revealed the depth of his wisdom and purpose. Jesus did not need grand displays of power or flamboyant words to make a difference in the world. His calmness and steadfastness in his principles, even when facing immense suffering, provide a profound example of emotional control and resilience. We all know this is not easy, but if we want to grow and evolve, we need to draw inspiration from the lessons of true sages. By not reacting impulsively, you demonstrate an inner strength that words cannot describe. That alone commands respect because others see that you cannot be emotionally manipulated. Controlling emotions is not something that happens overnight. It's a constant practice. In a world full of emotional challenges and stressful situations, strengthening self-control may seem like a difficult task, but stoic techniques offer an effective approach to facing these difficulties. The first technique involves adopting the perspective of an external observer. Try to imagine yourself as a neutral spectator instead of diving headfirst into your emotions. Take a step back and observe the situation with a more objective view. This change in perspective can help avoid impulsive responses and allow you to react more calmly. Another important practice is taking time at the end of the day to reflect on your reactions and behaviors. Marcus Aurelius, one of the most notable Stoic philosophers, used to do this in his meditations. This habit of daily reflection allows you to assess whether your reactions were guided by reason or emotion. Ask yourself, how did I react to situations today? Did I control my emotions, or was I controlled by them? This evaluation helps identify behavioral patterns and develop greater self-awareness. It is also essential to recognize that while we cannot control the actions or behaviors of others, we have complete control over our own actions and reactions. In moments of stress or provocation, remember that the only thing truly within your control is how you choose to respond. This realization helps shift your focus inward and adopt a more mature and mindful approach in tense situations. Taking a pause can be extremely helpful. When you feel like you're about to lose control, whether in a traffic argument or any stressful situation, take a deep breath and ask yourself if the reaction you are about to have will really help resolve the situation or if it could make things worse. This brief pause allows you to calm your emotions and let reason prevail over immediate impulses. Sometimes, a simple act of breathing and stepping back can make a huge difference in how you handle challenges. The real power lies in controlling yourself and acting based on reason, instead of being driven by fleeting emotions. Integrating these stoic techniques into your daily life can significantly improve your self-control and your ability to face difficult situations with serenity and clarity. Developing the habit of reflecting, pausing, and analyzing your reactions helps build a strong foundation of self-awareness and resilience, allowing you to navigate the complexities of life with greater balance and wisdom. How can you practice self-control in your daily life? Self-control is one of the most powerful skills we can cultivate, especially when we consider it from the perspective of Stoicism, which values mastery over one's own emotions and reactions. Being able to remain calm and balanced in moments of stress or trial is what separates a reactive mind from a controlled one. But how exactly can you practice self-control in your day-to-day -day life? Let's explore some concrete actions you can take to strengthen this mental muscle. Self-control begins in the small moments, those everyday situations where we usually react impulsively. The secret is to identify these triggers and start building a more balanced and mindful response. 
Think about the following everyday situations. Imagine you are driving to work and someone suddenly cuts you off in traffic. The natural first reaction for many would be to honk, yell, or even speed up to return the offense. But a practitioner of self-control sees it differently. Instead of reacting, you take a deep breath and remember that you have no control over others' actions, only over your own response. The momentary anger loses its power when you realize that giving into it only ruins your day. Next time someone irritates you in traffic or any other situation, try counting to 10 before reacting. This small space between the stimulus and the response allows your brain to process the situation more calmly, reducing the emotional impulse. Another way to practice self-control is in situations that require quick decisions or can cause immediate stress. Imagine you are at work and suddenly a crisis arises that demands quick solutions. Most people panic or act impulsively, making decisions without thinking. Stoicism teaches us to stop, reflect, and then act. Let's say you receive unexpected criticism from a colleague or boss. Responding with a violent reaction is common. However, someone who practices self-control recognizes that the first reaction is rarely the best. You choose to take a deep breath, listen to what is being said, and process it logically rather than emotionally. By responding calmly and serenely, you not only avoid confrontation, but also demonstrate maturity and control, earning the respect of those around you. When in a situation of criticism or conflict at work, use silence as a tool. Before responding to criticism or making a decision under pressure, pause for a few seconds, take a deep breath, and just observe your own emotions. This helps neutralize reactivity and allows for a more measured response. Self-control isn't limited to emotions and reactions towards others. It's also exercised in the small choices we make every day, like what we eat, how we spend our time, or how we handle immediate desires. In Stoicism, the concepts of moderation and discipline are deeply rooted. True self-control lies in knowing how to say no to yourself when something doesn't align with your values and goals. Think about a time when you were on a diet or trying to be healthier. Suddenly, a delicious dessert appears in front of you or someone offers you fast food in the afternoon. The temptation to give in is great and the immediate desire is to eat what is in front of you. But practicing self-control means pausing and reflecting. Is this good for me? Does it align with my long-term goals? By becoming aware of the consequences of giving in to temptation, you can say no and stay on the path you set. Before succumbing to an immediate desire, like eating something off your diet or procrastinating an important task, do a small mental exercise. Visualize the long-term results. Ask yourself how you'll feel in an hour if you give in and how you'll feel if you resist. This simple reflection can be the decisive factor in making more conscious choices. For Stoics, self-control was more than just a practical tool. It was a pillar of their philosophy of life. Epictetus, one of the greatest representatives of Stoicism, said that it's not things that disturb us, but our interpretation of them. Therefore, practicing self-control in daily life essentially means changing how you interpret events. This starts with small daily acts, such as holding back an impulsive response, resisting a momentary temptation, or choosing to act calmly in a tense situation. Staying cool can be a growth tool in a world that is often chaotic and emotionally intense. Maintaining your composure may seem like a Herculean challenge. We are constantly bombarded by stimuli that test our patience, resilience, and above all, our emotional balance. However, when understood and applied wisely, calmness can be a powerful tool for personal and professional growth. Imagine, for example, that you are about to face an important exam or a big presentation at work. It's completely natural to feel an avalanche of emotions in these moments. Nervousness, anxiety, and fear can flood your mind and body, making it hard to concentrate and make rational decisions. These emotions, while valid and often intense, can obscure your judgment and ultimately harm your performance. This is where the concept of composure comes in. Instead of being swept away by these emotional waves, 
Composure allows you to take a step back, breathe deeply, and observe the situation with a clearer, more focused mind. By adopting a composed stance, you are not ignoring your emotions. You are creating mental space where you can analyze and respond to situations more thoughtfully and effectively. Let's consider the example of Anna, a dedicated professional going through a particularly turbulent period at work. She was about to face a significant performance review, an event that could be a source of stress and insecurity for many. Like most of us, Anna felt a mix of nervousness and anxiety regarding the outcome of this review. However, instead of allowing these feelings to dominate her mind and disrupt her preparation, Anna chose to take a more composed and strategic approach. She began by listing her strengths and areas for improvement, reflecting honestly on her performance. This analysis was not only an exercise in self-assessment, but also a way to focus on concrete, objective aspects of her work. Instead of drowning in anxiety, Anna concentrated on how she could improve and prepare herself in the best possible way. In preparation for the review, she dedicated time to go over her projects, gather feedback, and refine her presentations. This approach allowed Anna to face the review with an attitude of confidence and clarity. By approaching the situation with composure, she was able to transform her fear into a driving force for improvement and preparation. Composure not only helped Anna prepare better, but also allowed her to face the review with a more objective and less emotional perspective, resulting in a stronger performance and a more positive evaluation. Thus, composure is not a form of dehumanization or indifference. It's a way to channel your emotions constructively. It allows you to stay focused even when confronted with significant challenges. In times of crisis, this ability to separate emotions from the problem and act with clarity can be the key to turning challenges into opportunities for growth. Another example can be seen in personal situations, such as when you're facing a significant conflict in a relationship. Imagine you and a friend disagree on an important matter. It's easy to let anger and frustration take over the conversation escalating the conflict. However, by adopting a composed stance, you can choose to listen to the other person's viewpoint calmly, understanding their perspective before reacting. This approach not only helps resolve the conflict more effectively, but also strengthens the relationship, allowing for more open and respectful communication. Thus, composure is a valuable tool for facing both professional and personal challenges. It provides a solid foundation of clarity and objectivity, helping to transform situations into learning and growth opportunities. By incorporating this approach into your life, you become more capable of handling adversity with confidence and resilience, leading to deeper and more lasting personal development. Composure is also useful when facing personal challenges. Imagine you're going through a crisis in a relationship Instead of reacting impulsively or allowing anger or sadness to dictate your actions, maintaining composure can help you reflect on the situation more clearly. Consider John, who was dealing with a serious disagreement with a friend. Rather than confronting his friend aggressively, John chose to listen and understand his friend's point of view before reacting. This space for reflection allowed him to find a more balanced and constructive solution to the conflict. Imagine, for example, that you are about to face an important exam or a big presentation at work. It's completely natural to feel an avalanche of emotions in these moments. Nervousness, anxiety, and fear can flood your mind and body, making it hard to concentrate and make rational decisions. These emotions, while valid and often intense, can obscure your judgment and ultimately harm your performance. This is where the concept of composure comes in. Instead of being swept away by these emotional waves, composure allows you to take a step back, breathe deeply, and observe the situation with a clearer, more focused mind. By adopting a composed stance, you are not ignoring your emotions. You are creating mental space where you can analyze and respond to situations more thoughtfully and effectively. Let's consider the example of Anna, a dedicated professional going through a particularly turbulent period at work. She was about to face a significant performance review, an event that could be a source of stress and insecurity for many. 
Like most of us, Anna felt a mix of nervousness and anxiety regarding the outcome of this review. However, instead of allowing these feelings to dominate her mind and disrupt her preparation, Anna chose to take a more composed and strategic approach. She began by listing her strengths and areas for improvement, reflecting honestly on her performance. This analysis was not only an exercise in self-assessment, but also a way to focus on concrete, objective aspects of her work. Instead of drowning in anxiety, Anna concentrated on how she could improve and prepare herself in the best possible way. In preparation for the review, she dedicated time to go over her projects, gather feedback, and refine her presentations. This approach allowed Anna to face the review with an attitude of confidence and clarity. By approaching the situation with composure, she was able to transform her fear into a driving force for improvement and preparation. Composure not only helped Anna prepare better, but also allowed her to face the review with a more objective and less emotional perspective, resulting in a stronger performance and a more positive evaluation. Thus, composure is not a form of dehumanization or indifference. It's a way to channel your emotions constructively. It allows you to stay focused even when confronted with significant challenges. In times of crisis, this ability to separate emotions from the problem and act with clarity can be the key to turning challenges into opportunities for growth. Another example can be seen in personal situations, such as when you're facing a significant conflict in a relationship. Imagine you and a friend disagree on an important matter. It's easy to let anger and frustration take over the conversation escalating the conflict. However, by adopting a composed stance, you can choose to listen to the other person's viewpoint calmly, understanding their perspective before reacting. This approach not only helps resolve the conflict more effectively, but also strengthens the relationship, allowing for more open and respectful communication. Thus, composure is a valuable tool for facing both professional and personal challenges. It provides a solid foundation of clarity and objectivity, helping to transform situations into learning and growth opportunities. By incorporating this approach into your life, you become more capable of handling adversity with confidence and resilience, leading to deeper and more lasting personal development. Composure is also useful when facing personal challenges. Imagine you're going through a crisis in a relationship, Instead of reacting impulsively or allowing anger or sadness to dictate your actions, maintaining composure can help you reflect on the situation more clearly. Consider John, who was dealing with a serious disagreement with a friend. Rather than confronting his friend aggressively, John chose to listen and understand his friend's point of view before reacting. This space for reflection allowed him to find a more balanced and constructive solution to the conflict. Moreover, composure doesn't mean you're being insensitive. It's possible to be composed and still be empathetic. Composure helps separate your emotions from the problem, allowing you to understand the situation better and react more effectively. For example, when Carla lost a loved one, she felt profound sorrow. Instead of drowning in pain, she used her composure to focus on the practical needs of the moment, organizing the funeral, handling legal matters, and supporting family members. This approach gave her the strength needed to face grief more balanced. Staying composed in the face of difficulties doesn't mean ignoring your feelings. It means using a calmer, more thoughtful perspective to deal with them. This approach can transform challenges into growth opportunities, helping to develop resilience and keep your focus on your goals. Rather than being a shield against life, composure is a tool that when used wisely, can lead to deeper and more lasting personal growth. Thank you for sharing this moment with me. Your presence here is meaningful, and it's a privilege to accompany and support you on your journey of personal development. To continue receiving content that can help strengthen your mind and promote personal growth, I'd like to ask a small favor. If you found this message helpful and inspiring, consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the button below. Your subscription is an amazing way to support the work we're doing and ensure you don't miss future valuable videos. Additionally, if you know someone who could benefit from this message, don't hesitate to share this video with them. 
Sometimes a word of encouragement or a new perspective can make all the difference in someone's life. I would also love to hear your thoughts and reflections. Leave a comment below to let me know what you think and how I can continue to help you. If you wish, write the Stoic SB in the comments. This will help me identify who is truly committed to personal growth and who, like you, is willing to invest in their own development. I deeply appreciate your time and support, and I'll see you next time.